Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here and clicking just because of the title, hi, nice to meet you. My name is Chloe DeVerrier. I'm a realtor in Los Angeles, California. And I wanted to share with you guys my story. And I recognize that in all these years that I've had a channel, I've rarely ever been vulnerable and really wanted to open up about myself and kind of how I got here. So I'm going to roll us back to when I was just a teeny little bop. So I was born and raised in Alameda, California. It's up in the East Bay. It's an island off of San Francisco. And yes, it is an island. It's connected by a bridge to Oakland, to California. And I literally, for the longest time, I hated real estate. Now let me explain. I grew up in a real estate family, okay? My parents invested in a lot of duplexes. My mom was an agent herself. And so for the longest time, I despised real estate. I, you know, as a kid, the last thing you're thinking about is making money and, and selling houses and, and building an investment portfolio. And I have so many memories of being like eight years old and sitting in a Sunday open house in the afternoon. And when you're eight years old, that's just not what you want to do. If you asked me as a kid, if I would ever do real estate, I would bet you a million dollars that I would never even touch the industry, which is quite ironic today. It wasn't until I went to college where I really kind of discovered my own appreciation for the industry. And I kind of discovered my own perception of what real estate is and what real estate means. I got into three big schools in California. I knew I wanted to stay in California. So I got into Cal, UCLA, and SD. SD just wasn't a good fit for me. Cal was just way too close to home. I know a lot of you couldn't relate to that. And I ended up falling in love with UCLA. Now, the funny thing is I have family in the outskirts of LA. So I have family in Moore Park, which if you are from here or you live here, you know, it's like a good hour away from the West side. And my parents and I would come down to visit my grandma every once in a while, but we never went to the cool parts of LA. Santa Monica, Brentwood, Beverly Hills. I had never been there. So for the longest time, I thought LA was Moore Park. And I was like, why do people love Los Angeles so much? I don't get it. I don't see it. And it wasn't until I was 18 when I came here for the first time to tour the college where I was like, I see it now. I see why people love this city. I moved down here in 2017 and I started my college career and I had a very stereotypical freshman year, you know, I was really involved. I had fun. I was a kid. And you know, when you're a freshman in college, you, most people aren't too focused on knowing what they want to do for the rest of their lives. Um, and I do think though, it is wild that people in their twenties and people in college are expected to know what they want to do for the rest of their life. I, I really struggled because when I was in school, I just knew that this, I wasn't really meant for this very stereotypical college to corporate life transition. I knew I wasn't meant to do corporate. I just knew that I, I wouldn't really connect with that. And I've always known that I wanted to build something for myself. I wanted to do something of my own. Somehow rediscovered real estate. And if I'm being frank, I don't recall what really triggered me, but I rediscovered it. So I took a leap of faith and I went and I invested into getting my certification, which I'll have the link below if you want to do the same certification course that I did when I was 19. And I started working on getting my real estate license. At the time, I was still invested in school and this potential new opportunity. So it quite frankly, it took me quite some time to get through the course. I think it took me about six months to actually really haul it out and finish it. I ended up signing for the exam and passed on my first try. And at this point I was like, I think I'm ready. So this was near the end of my sophomore year to the beginning of junior year. And I said, F it, I'm taking a leap of faith. I am taking a risk and I I'm just doing it. I'm going to do it. So I dropped out of UCLA. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell really anyone other than maybe my closest couple friends. And I just threw myself headfirst into real estate. So I started getting my license at 19. 
I was licensed by the time I was in my 20s. I had a few normal months in the industry. I, I turned 21 and then the good old pandemic struck America. And this was the craziest time for me and, and for getting started because not only was our country just in complete uproar of what to do with themselves, but I was told that I basically couldn't do any of the things that we're told to do when we're building a real estate career. I couldn't door knock, I couldn't do open houses, I couldn't do networking events, I could not do really any face-to-face -face prospecting, which we need to do. Getting And getting started in this business was incredibly tough for me, incredibly tough because most people when they come in, they're older, they're more established, they have pre-established connections and they can lean onto their sphere to build out relationships for business. But for me, I wasn't from LA. I didn't have friends at 2021 20, who are buying or selling real estate. So I was really forced to start from the ground up. And that was tough when the pandemic hit. So I really just leaned into the social media route. Now I did end up going back to school and I know that the pandemic had a lot of negative, negative experiences for a lot of people, but in a way it was a real true blessing for me because it allowed me to go back to school and finish my degree and do it online while being fully present to try and pursue my career. The first year was tough because not only did we have COVID, but I was also in school. I had literally doubled my course load to finish and graduate a year early. And I was trying to learn as much as I could about an industry that I really didn't know much about other than the few experiences that I might have witnessed as a kid, but obviously you're not transacting as a child in, in business. It was a scary time because I was fully financially independent. Um, I was living off of my savings and I really didn't close anything my first year. I did two deals, but to be honest, there were deals that were from other agents in my office who needed an agent to pull on to help them. So I got a portion of the commission. It really didn't cover much if anything, I lost money that year that versus making money. I, I graduated at the end of that year and I started my second year fresh, day one, full 100% focus into real estate. I was not spread across any other obligations or expectations and I just went for it. At this point, I'm still living on my savings. I don't have a lot of money coming in and I was feeling the pressure. I ended up getting a part-time job. I worked at this high-end vegan restaurant in LA as a hostess. I won't disclose the name. I did that three to four nights a week to, to pay for the bills and I hated it. I hated it so much because I was working like 16 hour days. I would work in real estate all day, go to my night shift. I would have clients calling me and my shifts and I would have to make excuses about how to go to the bathroom or I would be in the alleyway taking phone calls and negotiating, literally negotiating deals. And nobody knew I was doing all of this. And the craziest story is that I remember I was working with a client to buy a condo in West Hollywood and he came into that restaurant at the bar for happy hour. And I was up front just talking, have a great time. And then until I realized that my client was literally at the bar, we locked eyes for a millisecond. And I ran to the back of the restaurant and I stayed in the back all night long. I was so afraid to, I never brought it up. I, to this day, do not know if he knew I was working there at that time, but I was so afraid to, to confront the fact that I didn't want them to think that I, I wasn't being successful in this business that they don't want to trust to work with me. It all worked out. He closed on the property. We still keep in contact, but that was craziest story ever. But I really struggled that year. I was working my, my, my tush off and um, I ended up quitting. I quit that job, ended up making six figures that year and I ended up making more money than my manager, which is wild at 22. Since then, I have been continuing to build my career, build my network, build my sphere. I've had some amazing listings and clients that I've closed on and work with. And a year and a half ago is when I started getting into real estate speaking and coaching as well. So in a way, I'm now kind of separated between two careers, two industries, but yet they're also very similar and very tied together. And this story kind of just shows you how knowing the right people, being at the right place at the right time and energetically being open to receive opportunities can do so many wonders for you because I never in a million years thought I would ever public speak, let alone being flown across the country to speak. And I remember this was a year and a half ago. 
Um, Chris Leader is a big national real estate coach in our industry, and he's never had anyone speak under him. It's been him. He's like one of the OG coaches, just kind of like Tom Ferry as well. And I remember he had a six week course in Los Angeles and came out to pitch it. And we were, we had to sign up for that class that same day, right after the class, if you wanted to join. And I remember this so vividly, it was a thousand dollar course. And I was so scared because I had never invested in myself like that before. I had never invested truly into my own business and I didn't know what to do. I remember my hands, like I, I couldn't get myself to sign that piece of paper with my credit card information. And I remember my mentor was sitting next to me and she said, you got to do it. He's great. You just take the leap of faith, do it. It's going to pay off in the end. So I signed up after much hesitation. I took the six week course. And on the very last day of the six week course, it's a class on social media, digital branding and marketing. And that is how I built my business. And Chris Leader is a fantastic coach, but you could tell that this was the, the, the one portion of the course that he knew, he knew it enough, but he didn't know it like an expert. And I never raised my hand in class. I'm always an observer. I always listen. And I remember he had asked another woman a question near the front. I was in the third row and she couldn't answer the question and him and I locked eyes and he asked me and he ended up standing in front of me for five, 10 minutes, just chatting away. And I kept I was so quietly being like, well, actually you could do this. You could do this. You could do that. Giving some tips and tricks as this is how I built my career. And I remember in front of the whole class of over 200 people, he goes, I'm hiring. And I didn't know what he meant by that. I was like hiring like social media management. I don't know what that means, but I gave him my business card at the end of class. And I just said, you know, what? it's in his hands. I don't know what this means, but we'll see where it goes. Initially, once he called me, initially, we had thought maybe I'll just do some private coaching. And then one day he was like, how do you feel about just teaching the entire course? How do you feel about just teaching this entire class? And I was just like, oh my God, like I've never public spoke before. I, this was never something I envisioned myself to do. But again, you never know until you know, like uh, meanings. You can't say no to something until you, you got to give it a chance. And if you fail miserably, at least it's a learning lesson. And who knows? It could turn out amazing. So I just went for it. And now I've been speaking and coaching on top of my real estate career for the last year and a half or so. I've been to so many cities, so many states. I've even spoken outside of the country as well. And that has just opened up so many opportunities for me in my real estate career. Because now when I go to a listing appointment, I can tell them, listen, you need social media. You need digital branding and marketing for your, for your home to be able to sell successfully. I can do that. And I can tell you that other agents are hiring me to do this, to be able to learn how to do it for you. So that's been huge. And, and, and also building my referral network. You guys, agent to agent relationships are so crucial in this business. So, so, so crucial. And people don't talk about it enough. You need to build established relationships with other agents. So that kind of just leads me here today. I'm, I'm starting my fifth year in the business. I'm really excited. Uh, I just renewed my license officially literally a week and a half ago. And I'm really excited to see where life takes me. I think in the next five years, I would love to be able to start building a small team and being able to scale my business, being able to scale out to more clients and be in a place where we're consistently producing and consistently just growing and building a name for myself in the city. So I really hope that this video can inspire you guys to take a leap of faith and to know that not everything is perfect, but if you know that you want to get into this business and you're willing to make the sacrifices for it, there's enough room for everybody here. There is so much business out there to be had and you absolutely can have success no matter how old you are. I know when I was younger, it was my biggest insecurity was how old I was. And yet I have never had a client question me on how old I am because I carry myself with confidence and I know you guys can do that too. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed any comments or questions. Let me know down below. And of course, if you could like this video and please subscribe, I would love to hit 20,000 by the end of the year. And we're kind of getting very close. You guys trust in yourself and trust that it'll all work out because if you believe it, it will.